C Rolo three with me today on Steam it. How are you today, sir? I'm doing well, doing very well. Good. Good, good. This is our last episode of the year. Then we're gonna take a couple of weeks off and get back to it. After that, probably the what, second week of January. Yeah. What we're looking at. So today's a special show today. Today is a we are not prepared year in review show. <laughs> We're entitled to at least one of those. I think so. I think so. So, you know, we'll go for as long as we can uh, without boring you guys and see who shows up, see who's watching this afternoon, and uh, go from there. All right. Sounds good. But first, we have a message from our producer. Yes, the producer has uh, changed locations. He is now with his new family and settling in well. Uh, and, but Jakey wanted to wish all the viewers of Morning Coin with John and Chaz a happy holiday. And uh, so he's uh, he may come back for an occasional show. We don't know. Okay. How long has he been there? there? He's happy and. How long has he I'm been there? How long has he been there? Uh, well, that Friday of our last show, he left in the afternoon. He did leave that afternoon, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah, and yeah. so far, so good, huh? Yeah, well, you know, you know, the other thing is, I could literally walk to where he's at. That's okay. how close he is. Well, maybe he'll just find his way back home. You never know, but he's uh, he's in good hands. He's with people that are going to take good care of him and love him, and he's going to get, let's face it, I, I got seven cat, other cats. And yeah. I was able only to spend maybe an hour a day with Jakey, and he really deserved more than that. Okay. I'm a, are all cats different in the amount of time that they need or, or the amount of human interaction they need for the day? Oh, yeah. I mean, if you have kids. I mean, if you your kids have different personalities, mm -hmm. and our, uh, our cats are the same way. They okay. all have their own personalities. Gotcha. All right. My wife says they're just like little kids. Only they don't ever learn to do chores. No, they don't. Well, they can shred stuff really well. Oh, document destruction. And get yeah, it. furniture destruction. I saw my my uh, my sister-in-law has a couple dogs, and they just shredded her pillows in her room last night. She wasn't too happy. Oh, God. But uh, it was a sight to behold. <laughs> well, we have uh, armor plated our furniture, so. Yeah. Yeah, have it wrapped in vinyl and, and foam board. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, here's a number to call in, you guys. Uh, you see the call-in number at the bottom. You can also just go to zoom.us and type in that 468-186-430. It's a standard number when we are live, when we are live, not a live, that uh, you can come in and just be a part of the show with us. Uh, if you are a cryptocurrency enthusiast, a day trader, just a steamian, a Bitcoin maximalist, um, someone who's interested in Ripple, then you can come in here and just say hello and talk about it. We talk with us. We usually try to highlight a platform, protocol, or project uh, related to blockchain or distributed ledger technology each week. Um, so, yeah, so what we're going to do today is just kind of go through and do some, some technical analysis, kind of run down some projects that that we're excited about moving forward and, and just just do a quick show to kind of close out the year and and uh, get ready for next year. Yeah. So how do you want to start? Oh, what were you going to well, say? Let's take a look at the links. Okay. Um, I quickly, when I discovered my uh, FUPA and what, what we were doing today, I, I quickly ran through the news and tried to find some uh, pertinent information. I thought the top link, though, was uh, interesting. Uh, Facebook is going to be starting their own crypto program. Unbelievable. Now, I'm so having sick of said them. that, you know, Facebook is a questionable organization at best, but this could bring cryptocurrencies to the mainstream in a big way. If they're I mean, interoperable. Well, let's fa let's say this, that you're on Facebook using their crypto, and all of a sudden you discover there are other cryptocurrencies. 
your other black blockchain projects. People will start talking about it. Mm. So the catch-22 for Facebook is once they open up Pandora's box, they could work against them. Wow. I don't even know how to... I mean, I love your unbridled optimism, and that, that's a very good point. I'm just so cynical with Facebook right now and oh, how I people mean, use you know, it. They're, they're going to take advantage of people. There's no question of that. Yeah. Uh, but what I'm saying is it's like once you turn it loose... It's, they won't be able to control it. People will go, oh, I heard about this other cryptocurrency. And they'll, they'll be right. conversations. And right, they could help with main street ad mainstream adoption. Yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, the mainstream adoption, they'll start spinning off, people will start looking other places. So okay. I thought that was a, a really good... No, that's uh, cool. That's cool. I, I honestly, I saw it too, and I was like, oh, great, here they go. <laughs> you know, because some of these guys, well, I mean, even Steam it and Medium and and Civil or yeah, I think it's Civil or Civic and all those other guys that are doing like news posting and blogging and social media and stuff like that. It's like now these guys are getting in, you know. Yeah, it's a me too type of thing. People with the money, sure, sure. You but just on hope. the other hand, it may you know open some doors for uh, a more mainstream uh, adoption on it. So. Oh, and the next link, of course, really plays right into your uh, theory about Christmas money in the crypto market. Yeah, what do they say? Uh, they're saying that uh, there's going to be a crypto, uh, how much steam is left in the, in the Christmas rally? Well, at, after we get our crypto money on uh, Christmas, uh, the markets will undoubtedly be open. Mm -hmm. and you'll be able to go right to the market next day if you're you know if it's uh if it's in your account and um make your uh purchases your investments in cryptocurrency yep we'll see if there's that follow-through so what are uh, they suggesting because it's already kind of up the market's already up right now so are they suggesting that the rally might be coming soon or it'll become after or? I, I think we're in we're at the first steps of the rally right now and we'll look at that in a little bit Okay, okay. A uh, really good news. Um, there is a bill that's been introduced by lawmakers to classify cryptocurrencies as not an investment and not subject to the securities rules of 1930. Oh, well, thank God. Yes, we'll see where that goes. Someone listen to me complain. They must have been you, right? <laughs> you said it and they they listened so everyone everyone on twitter always thinks it's them that had the original idea isn't it yeah i know <laughs> i always think that and i always find out i'm wrong right i always think it then i google it and then i realize that 15 other people have thought it sometimes two decades before me so here, here's an idea i had that someone picked up on um uh, I was trying to develop a product that attached to the car, a car's brake lights, so that when you slammed on the brakes, they would strobe flash really yeah. fast to let you know the car is in a slow, a, a, a high speed stop. slowdown, right? Mm -hmm. Well, somebody's come up with that. That's pretty cool. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So I missed out on that one. Uh, Last link that we have. Okay. Coinbase is starting a learn and get paid in crypto learning project. So they were going to, you're going to learn about cryptocurrencies, take little quizzes and watch videos, and then you're going to get paid for doing that mm. in crypto. Now, here's the kicker. Mm. You must be selected by Coinbase. It's an invitation only. I see. So they're limiting their their exposure, let's say, mm -hmm. by selecting certain people. Well, I'm sure they got to test it, too, to see if it works. Right. That's you true. Know, so, okay. Hey, that's cool, man. I'm interested. Yeah, we'll see I if will, they I will take, I will watch whatever video and take whatever survey necessary in order to earn cryptocurrency 
Yeah. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I like testing my brain. I, I, do I too. honestly, I'll do anything that asks me to, if I can earn something that I think is of value. I'll watch a video and answer some questions. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah. Easy to even take a little test. It, and it helps for adoption. It helps for adoption and it helps people retain information. So if you get it for free or even, it's not for, I mean, it's not for free. You're investing your time. Right. So if you invest your time in doing that, you earn cryptocurrency for doing it. That's cool. That's why I like to use that earn uh, to do surveys and stuff like that. I don't know. Have you used Earn yet? Did I try to get you to use Earn? I, I am signed up for Earn, but I found most of the projects were based on mobile apps, and I. That's right. You because you had to have a yeah. Because sometimes you have to register on Telegram. Now Telegram has a it, it, yeah. It's right. I got you. Yeah. So it sort of excluded me because I I'm a flip phone person still. You know, I like to keep my head up. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, the, and the only reason you keep your head up is because you, it's impossible to text on the flip phone. Yeah, I mean, it takes forever, right? I, I When I get texts from people with, with smartphones, I'm in the middle of a sentence, and they've already sent me like three or four texts. Right, <laughs> I know for why sure. why I didn't answer them. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> that's cool. Okay. Coinbase, learn and get paid. Yeah, I think that's an excellent idea. I like that. The market is the market went back up, I and mean, it's back. To, it's ten tendered off a little bit, but it went back up this week. Yes, I'm seeing. I think what we're looking for is the reversal of the downturn. Um, if it can hold its current position uh, for a while, I think that we'll see uh, a greater gain in the market. Okay. And so you're saying if it can hold in the area where it is right now between like 38 and 42, somewhere yeah. in there, then that is okay? Or is that, it, like, am I off on those on those parameters? I think you're close. And, I mean, let's face it, there, there's no exact ticking point. We mm -hmm. don't know where that is until it actually happens. I, okay. I'm just, I used to love this. I, when I was in the brokerage business, I would get guys calling me on the phone in the morning and tell me to buy this stock at the low of the day. And I'm like, I'm not going to know what that is until after the market closes. Right. Right. You know, where do you think I am? You know, I don't have that uh, crystal ball that tells me. So the bottom of the market is pretty much that same way. You're really not going to know where the bottom is until when it actually happens and there's a turnaround. For sure. For sure. Okay, and what's this slide here that we're looking at? This is, uh, uh, I just wanted to show that that last candlestick, that green one, is showing the uptick. And if you look at the line, that dotted line that goes right across that green candle at the end, mm -hmm. you can see that it is right at the resistance point of that red candle. If you see it, they almost both touch the green, that, that yep. line. Yep, I see that. So that's our resistance area. If we can get it above that line and hold it there, I think we're going to see a reversal continue. Interesting. Okay. Okay. And of course, the uh, the yellow lines are the uh, are the Fibonacci retracement levels. Now, is it also possible that that green line is the the Bitcoin Christmas bump, and it's just going to re it's just going to go back down? To where it was? Yeah, roll the dice, John. I don't know. <laughs> if I see another candle, because this is a weekly chart, mm -hmm. so each one of those candles represents one week. If I see another candle in the green, I would say we're on our way. Ah, I got you. So if it goes back to red for the next seven yeah. days or so, or if it closes red in the next seven days, then still bearish. Right. All right, I'm learning. I'm learning. What about the green line on the bottom? Okay, so the that's a relative strength line. Oh, okay, okay. And typically, when it's down like it is, mm -hmm. uh, and that just below that purple area or it was riding on it, that is mean an oversold position, or oh. we're at what they consider to be the bottom. 
And you can see there's that old turn up in the end. Yep. You know, the little tick up there. So I'm suspecting that that's going to continue, but we will see. Okay. Okay, so then let's, um, so can we stay on this slide and retract back to, so let's look where that green line on the oversole or on the RSI for October and November of last year, you can see that it's, there's two peaks above that purple line. Yes. Tell us what that would indicate usually. Well, there, at that point, um, when it really, really goes, let's look at the second peak. Okay, second, right, uh, right, the one that there, actually. Mm -hmm. that it almost, where it's almost pegged against the top of the, uh, the chart there. Mm -hmm. That would be an indication to me to get out. Okay. And so the first one showed that there was some strength, although it did fall off, but it returned again very strong. So if you'd have paid attention to that peak line and you were in Bitcoin and you sold at that point, you'd be happy, happy, happy. Yep, I got you. But everybody thought it was going to a million dollars. <laughs> so they hung in there. Go to, that, go to a million dollars and what? Right. That's what we talked about exit strategies at one time. Oh, yeah. You know, about you got to know when to get out. You have to have an exit plan. And if you don't have that, then you're going to end up at the bottom with the rest of the fish. Okay. Good point. Good point. Anything else on the chart? Uh, not on this one. Uh, do you want to go to your next slide, or would you like to look at a screenshot I've got? Uh, let's look at a screenshot. Any, okay. any uh, last on the chart, any indication on the on value, on balance volume? Uh, again, I see Does that just stand? Okay. Because yeah. that little tick. Yeah, that little tick at the end, the tail. Uh-huh. So I would say that if that holds out for the next few weeks, I would think that we would be in good shape. Okay. Sounds good. Good. Uh, good. So I'm uh, going to share my screen with you now. Yep, you do that. I'm going to go ahead and turn off this overlay. And we're all set. Okay. Uh, I just want to, this, there's a strategy that, that I have used in the past and I've, I've written a program for it when I used program trading that I use and it entails two different things. One is a linear regression channel, which is the blue and red channel that's basically a straight line. And then the other one is the Bollinger Bands, which are the top uh, line and the bottom one that, you know, there are more like mountain charts. Okay. And so what I see here, first thing I look at, if I were a person that was going to use this particular technique, the first thing I look at is that the linear regression channel is in a downward motion. It's in a decline. The linear regression channel is both line, both blue and red lines. The blue and red, correct. Okay. That would throw me off a little bit. Because what I'd want to see in, in a good trading pattern is an upward trend in the value of the investment. But let's say we're going to go with this one. And what I see here is, and you, it's easy to point, it's very visual. If you look at one of the, the chart prices went above the regression channel, mm -hmm. those are probably obvious sell points. You had two opportunities right there near the beginning right. to sell okay. at good prices. Yep, yep. And then next, you see that big decline that comes with you know a few up and downs. And that's why I like linear regression channels is they sort of smooth out what you're looking at. It, uh, you're not you're not you know all caught up in the, the bumps and the little small moves of the uh, of the candlesticks. It's giving you a picture overall of which direction this is going. Yeah, I like it because it's mathematical. It, it strictly uh, uses a math 
equation to come up with it. But what I was getting at is you see that near the middle there, right after the few two peaks. And let me get my cursor up here. That's probably going to help a little. So here, between, it's between these two peaks, those were good obvious selling points right there. You could have got out and done fine. It looks like some people did. Yes. Well, that's probably what drove the price down initially, right? Yeah. And then we have this little, I, I call it a fake recovery right here. Mm -hmm. We did get a recovery. And if you're a day trader well, you probably, or a swing trader, you probably did well. But I'm not like that. I tend to look at the long term. So I would be holding out until we got here. Right. Because mathematically, this is the low side of the price of the Bitcoin cryptocurrency. Okay. In this particular time frame. Right. So if you bought here in this area, and this is where it gets tough, and this is why exit strategies are so important. The actual technique doesn't call for a sell unless it breaks that breaks that blue uh, top blue channel. Right. So you would have had to have either just been lucky and guessed it, or been like ran out of time and needed the money and sold it. Right. At this point, you have to make a judgment call, which is what it always comes down to. Okay. And so that for me probably would have been close enough. If I had actually made the right decision to get in at this bottom, mm -hmm. getting out here would have been uh, a, probably a good decision, even though it didn't break through. Now, on the system I use, that would not have been called the sell there. And that would have been, I would have held because it didn't break the Bollinger Band. Here, you can see that that line, the lower Bollinger Band, the little curvy one there. Yep. It broke through. That is a, that is a buy signal all the way in this technique. But up here, it did not. It didn't break either line. Didn't break the linear regression channel. Didn't break the Bollinger Band. So if you held strictly to the rules, you'd still be in there. And this is why I tend to veer away from investments in this system when it's in a downward trend. And that's what that linear regression channel is showing me is that the prices are declining overall. Mm -hmm. And basically, they have been. I mean, just going back to where they started in early 2016, late or late 2016, early 2017. Right. Typically, what I would do on a system like this is I would look at a, a three-month, a six-month, and a one-year chart to see which direction the trend is. See if, if, if with time, we're seeing a a change in direction of the value of your investments. Gotcha. So this is a good system, but I would only I would typically want to use this in an upward trending market, and you could probably make a killing using it. So in this system, you would have to on sells, you would have to break the bottom, very bottom channel, and the Bollinger Band uh, line for a buy, and then on the upside, the rule calls for a breakthrough of the top of the linear regression channel and a breakthrough of the Bollinger Band. And can you set all th those parameters up in trading software to, to do that automatically? I believe, I, I, I believe there are some out there that will do that. Okay. Uh, I, I have not uh, sophisticated enough to write the programs. I mean, the one I wrote for this was sort of like a modular program where I could set my parameters up and it would mathematically calculate the buys and sells. Right, but not necessarily uh, automate it to make the transaction. Right, and the thing, the thing with any time you do an automated trading system, it wasn't the 
the actual parameters of the buy sell system that got me. What got me was I didn't tell the system not to just buy everything that did that. <laughs> I needed my universe to be smaller. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I needed a smaller universe. So if you wanted to attack Bitcoin by itself, which is what you probably would have to do, that would be probably work very well. But because I had such a large universe I was using, it just it just went, to, you know, it's like artificial intelligence out of control. Now, what about the hodlers that don't care? Do they just believe that, you know, they have it in their mind that, you know, ten, five, ten years down the road, this is going to be worth so much, so they buy throughout this downward path? Yeah, dollar cost averaging is another way that you can... Uh, you can invest in the market and, and get average lower prices. So mm-hmm. when the market drops, you put in, a, I, I guess the ideal situation would be in this, John, would be to every month buy some of your favorite cryptocurrency. Oh, okay, I see. Right. And, and do just, it on a regular basis. And right. that will give you a lower average price. I see what you're saying. And try to buy when it's lower of that month. Right. Well, it, here, here's the thing. If you're putting in, let's say, $100 every month, if you buy $100 at 50 bucks, you get two shares. If you buy $100 at 10 bucks, you get 10 shares. So you're automatically reducing, getting more shares and reducing it. We can t- I think we should do a show just strictly on what I call ratio trading. And we can apply that to the crypto market. And, okay. And, I'll, and I will go into detail. It's a little bit involved. so. Well, my next I'll, question was going to be, what do you think about the people that actually, absolutely abhor that this Bitcoin, what they turned into this peer-to-peer currency of the future, has turned into a trading game currency and a race to the top for the internet of things. Yes. Um, well, you could say that about all kinds of investments, right? Everybody's trying to, to make a few bucks here and there, and they found a trading vehicle. Now, um, hopefully, what I'm looking at, there's going to be some kind of rever- reverse relationship between Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies and let's say a loaf of bread, right? Mm -hmm. So someone in some business is going to sell a loaf of bread for X amount of Bitcoin. If everyone starts using that same process for valuation, then all of a sudden now the, the, the loaf of bread is determining what the price of Bitcoin will be. Okay, I like that analogy. You know, it's, it's sort of backwards, but I'm thinking that it'll, and it'll probably work in both directions. But I think it's going to stabilize the value of the coin a little bit. Okay. That makes sense. So that is my, uh, my take on that uh, particular uh, thing. We'll talk, we can talk about that again and see how things are going. Okay. Good deal. What else are we doing? Uh, let's see here. Oh, I'm going to share this one with you, too. Just one more. The cryptocurrency index. Ooh, our so, favorite. Yeah. So the, uh, the very jagged line. This has a Bollinger Band attached to it mm-hmm. uh, as one of the indicators, but the jagged line running through the middle there is, in fact, the, the index, and you'll notice that it broke through the Bollinger Band. It sure did. And so I'm in, thinking this is an indication that, uh, that we were going to see an increase in the value of cryptos in general. Okay. And what's the red line? That's the top Bollinger Band line. Okay, green line's the bottom. The jagged one is the... The middle one is the, the moving average. 
Gotcha. Okay. And so it broke back. So you can see it was it was staying pretty much in. It broke out and then now like on a downward and then now it's back up within range. So if you used the Bollinger band uh, as a buying signal, you would have been buying this. I tend to like to wait when there's a breakthrough like that mm -hmm. to uh, see if to it's see legit. How far it's going to drop. So again, it, it, that comes down to waiting for the actual reversal before you jump in. Right, right. And so that could mean that it could go back down to where it was in November, early December. Still. It's possible. Sure. Right, right. Is I, it likely? Probably not. Okay. I'm sure there's a lot of people that like to hear that. Oh, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there wringing their hands right now. Just waiting. Yeah. When's it going to come back? Yeah. All right. Okay. So you had a slide too, right? Yeah, I did have a slide. Let me go ahead and bring it up over here. Um, this is just more of a kind of an announcement slide. I wanted to let you guys know that starting in January, Morning Coins will be broadcasting on the G1N Token account in 2019. Uh, we're still going to go on Fridays at 10 a.m., unless otherwise noted but uh that'll be in there we also have our morning coins gunnbc website that i'm going to take some time over the next two weeks without a broadcast to uh update that get the play the, the youtube playlist for all of our previous episodes up there and and get going and remember gunnbc stands for the global one network broadcasting company of which charles and i are both a part and on the team for if you have any information, or sorry, if you want any more information about becoming an affiliate, becoming an, a news person, a personality on the network, or uh, working with us to be a broadcasting affiliate or partner, then uh, just reach out to one of us or just go to g1nbc.com and, um, and type in affiliate, and you'll see a, a page on there that says how to become an affiliate. Fill out the form, and uh, someone from the network will get right back in touch with you ASAP. And remember, our vision is uh, serving your local hometown, so we want to connect community. We want to better connect communities and have, um, it's interesting, it's it's not necessarily a decentralized approach to media, but it's more. It's a better network approach to media and uh, better connect individual creatives and talent uh, with uh, local businesses in their local hometown. So follow G1N Token, the G1N Token account, more information on that project ASAP soon and as always our Vim TV is our live streaming partner and we'll continue to be with them through 2019 and appreciate all the work that they do to integrate these broadcasts not only onto the G1NBC sites but also into the Steam blockchain. How did I do? You did well. <laughs> well, Grasshopper. Thanks everyone for your upvotes so far. We appreciate it. Like DLive 24 Hour, Mimar, Patrick Ulrich, Lando Parento, Kelly Meatwagon. Appreciate the support um, that you guys all have given for the show. You guys can come on in if you want. Leave a comment in the chat. Those those comments will get recorded as part of the broadcast as well. So what are we doing uh, when we come back? Well, you were going to pick your favorite five blockchain projects, and I was going to pick my favorite five. Oh, really? Yeah. And I, we were going to go through them. I was telling the, um, I was telling the, um, the steaming pile crew about uh, pre-search. Yeah. And uh, th they were digging it. They were liking it. So, and I, they really liked that you could use uh, DuckDuckGo. As part of that too, because people really are, are mad at at Google and and all those centralized ones and want to get away from them. So that's great. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Um, I'm up to 87 pre right now. How are you doing? Holy crap, Chaz! Uh, like 37. Yep, I throw everything through there. Oh, I do too. I do too. Don't get me wrong. 
is just sometimes I just don't have the time, and I know I have it bookmarked, and so I just bring it yeah, up. Yeah, I know. Because it, it's an extra step. But I like it. I, I like it. All right, I will. I have my top five in mind already. I think. Okay. We'll probably overlap. I'm guessing. I know one we won't overlap on. Oh, the gambling <laughs> site. <laughs> the gambling site. You're no. I was thinking of your favorite centralized bank coin. Oh, you know, I wasn't even gonna look at that. What? Why? Because no, people already people already know that's one of your top five. Well, they know I like it, but, I mean, we've talked about it quite a bit. At least I have. I've talked about it a lot. Yeah. So I figured we just, like, give everybody a rest. Sure. And pick something else. Put our TV overlay back up. People get a little look behind the glass here. All right. Well, hey, listen, you have a good holiday. I think that's it, right? Did you have one more screen you wanted to share? Are you good? Nope. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for the technical analysis. Um, thank you guys for watching live. And if you're watching on the VOD, just leave a comment. Let us know what you think about the show. And we'll have more um, distributed ledger technology platforms, protocols, and projects coming to you next year. Yes. So follow Morning Coins, follow the G1N token account, and that's where we will see you back on VIM in 2019. Good holidays for everyone. Absolutely. You guys have a good one, and we'll see you shortly.